free and of course the scripture that was read for your hearing stresses the kind of peace that Holy Spirit has blessed us with. So we light the candles of hope from last week and peace for today. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to focus on uh, an acronym that says peace. Pain ends as Christ enters. Peace. Pain ends as Christ enters. Uh, sometimes in the struggles of life, even those of us who trust and believe Jesus, forget about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. During the midnight experiences, many of us struggle to open the door to our heart and allow peace, peace to take control. All right. Uh, you see, when we open the door to our heart and allow Christ to enter, casting every pain and every care on the Prince of Peace, for he cares for us, oh, yes. and the pain ends That's right. as the Spirit of Christ enters and mm -hmm. saturates our lives. That's right. Church, we become uh, consumed uh, with worries and cares of this mm -hmm. world, so much so that we forget God's got the whole world mm -hmm. in his hands. Consequently, we should not allow the struggles and the heartaches of life to weigh us down. Mm -hmm. When we allow God's peace to take control in every situation mm -hmm. and under every circumstance, we, not, we will not fret and we will not worry because He has it all under control. Mm -hmm. Peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says it this way. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Peace. Peace. Pain in as Christ enters. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, as Christians, we are not exempt uh, from the troubles and cares of this world. Mm -hmm. But we have the blessed assurance of knowing that pain ends, and it will, as Christ enters. We receive freedom from anxiety, fear, and worry. Jesus himself made us the promise to give us peace in this world. So I ask the question, why is it that we find it difficult to trust him? <laughs> peace. Often it's because we are afraid things will not go the way we want them to unless we control them. Uh, the less we are in control, the more anxious and worried we become. It's hard, friends, to let go and let God. Uh, Christian author of our daily bread, Hannah Smith, wrote this, and I quote, uh, If God can handle this whole universe, can he not handle our problems as well? <laughs> Friends, we often find ourselves guilty of forgetting about the promises, uh, the promise Jesus left his disciples in John 14, 27 that you heard from for your reading, uh, uh, for your hearing rather. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. This is the same promise 
He makes to all of us today who trust him as our Lord and Savior. All right. uh, so this, this morning, I want to talk about the peace that Jesus has promised to give us. I want to leave you with three thoughts this morning on peace because the pain ends as Christ enters. First, the peace that Jesus gives settles troubled hearts. The peace that Jesus gives us calms our fears. This is not the peace that the world gives, which does not last, but it is fleeting. When Jesus gives us something, he does not take it back. Uh, you can take huh, you can take him at his word. That's right. Peace. Pain ends as Christ enters. The songwriter, the songwriter says it this way: Trust him and never doubt. That's right. For he will surely bring you out. Yes. Take your burdens to the Lord and do what? Lead on them. Remember the fierce storm as we had last night. Uh, that terrified the disciples in the middle of the night near the center of the sea. He got up, rebuked the, way, the wind, and said to the waves, Peace, be still. Then uh, the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Uh, Mark 4, 39. Uh, believe me, when Jesus speaks peace, to your situation, mm -hmm. you can say, it's done. it's done. It's done. The second point I want to leave with you this morning is that obedience brings peace. Mm -hmm. No one can ever be sinless in this life. Mm -hmm. But God promises that what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me Practice these things, Paul says, and the God of peace will be with you. Right. Philippians 4 and 9. In fact, peace comes from living an obedient life. Uh, not a perfect life. And it is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22. Finally, Finally, talking about peace, the acronym PEACE, uh, pain ends as Christ enters. God has already made peace with us. Romans 5 and 1 says it this way. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have been born again, we should realize that God is already at peace with us through Jesus' death on the cross. The only way, the only way we can experience this peace of God that surpasses all understanding and all human understanding, let me add, is through the blood of the cross. The blood that shed, that Jesus shed for us. This is because he himself is the Prince of Peace. Peace. He died, yes. He died on the cross so that uh, he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And that was why he came and preached peace to those of us who were far off and peace to those who were near. Ephesians 2, 16 and 17, when we never have the peace, we can never rather have the peace of God until we have made peace with God. Remember, it is through the God of peace that we can have peace with God. And as Jesus said in John 14, 27, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
Friends, we will never ever experience true or lasting peace until we let go and let God. We must let go and let God. Uh, remember, uh, peace uh, uh, does not mean that we have a trouble-free life. It is a sense of calm in the midst of the storms. That's right. So, so I ask you today, what's robbing you of your peace? Mm -hmm. What's robbing you of your peace? Is it guilt? I advise you to turn to God for forgiveness. <laughs> What's robbing you of your peace? Is it worry? Remember to put your trust in the Lord. That's right. Could it be, could it be, could it be a change of job? Ask and it shall be given. Know that, and the, uh, know that the door will be open until you. He says, seek and ye shall find. Talking about peace, what's robbing you of your peace? Have you allowed the pain to subside as Christ enters this morning? Did you worry about the storm last night? Uh, did you worry about when you went to your closet uh, to find something to wear that you would have something in your closet that you could wear and perhaps even share with somebody else? talking about peace. Peace. Could it be, could it be, could it be your finances? The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. He will make a way out of no way. Talking about peace because the pain of whatever the situation is, it ceases as Christ enters. Uh, uh, could it be, could it be uh, with the news? Social media, could it be these political issues that's robbing you of your peace? Mm. Remember, God is in charge of everything, and that includes our politics. That's right. uh, are, you, are you allowing the fight over immigration issues mm. to rob you of your peace? Mm. Uh, did you allow the, 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 the vote uh, uh, against Roe v. Wade and the gun laws that have not been placed and put in place uh, to, to protect the people rob you of your peace. Is it issues? Is it the issues of black and white, straight and gay, uh, religious and un the, uh, the believer and the unbeliever? What has caused you to lose your peace? The Bible says the devil comes to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's right. Are you allowing it to rob you of your peace? Mm -hmm. Could it be the state of our beloved country uh, where many are struggling to find affordable health care uh, and adequate housing, uh, enough food to eat? The people of God, do not allow these worldly matters to steal your peace. I tell you, I tell you, the writer of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says it this way. If, there's that letter my mama would say, that crooked letter. Mm -hmm. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, yes. then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. All right. There is peace in God's presence. There is peace because the pain in as Christ enters. That, my friend, is real peace. It's real peace. Are you set? Perhaps somebody in this room to undergo major surgery. Remember, Jesus is the doctor that never lost a case. Pain ends as Christ enters. Open the door of your heart and let him in this morning. Have you lost your peace because of the state of world affairs and corruption in high places? Mm -hmm. Romans 8.31 reminds us, if God is for us, who, who, who can be against us? Talking about peace, pain ends 
as Christ enters. As I close this morning, church, I'm so glad that I can talk to Christ Jesus, uh, the Prince of Peace, about all things and all situations that's trying to steal my peace. Mm -hmm. The God of all peace wants to give you peace. And he is here now, right now, ready, ready to make the gift to you. Will you accept it? Will you accept peace? Will you allow your pain to end as Christ enters? Will you allow your pain to end as Christ, the Prince of Peace, the one we say Emmanuel is with us. The song says, and I close, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Church, please understand and realize on the second Sunday of Advent, Pain ends as Christ enters. He's here. Do you feel it? Do you feel whatever pain you had subsiding? Do you feel the pain of hurt and loss and lack subsiding? Do you feel the pain that you may have? for thinking of yourselves more highly than you ought. Dissipate, because Christ has entered. Peace. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with you, and you, and you, and me. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 To God be the glory.